I'm really excited to be here. Um, great to be in the nation's capital and tell you a little bit about what we're thinking about at Google uh, on bringing a better web for government. But before I do, let me just sort of step back for a second. Most of you seem uh, old enough to remember and talk about how amazing it is to be in technology today. Now, especially as a consumer, if you think about the kinds of things you can do, search the world's information with a click of a button and find it virtually immediately and anywhere in the world in any language you choose. Have information delivered to you in seconds. Yeah. Um, last year, YouTube had one trillion views. And every minute, every, sorry, every second, one hour of YouTube content is uploaded by users. Twitter has 350 million tweets that consumers send out every day. You can find anything you want and buy it and have it delivered, at least in the US and the UK, overnight, and it shows up. I, I can personally attest to it. I had 130 packages delivered yesterday. The kids just keep going and just ordering stuff from Amazon, and just, it's amazing. But the thing that people fail to recognize to make that work is incredibly difficult technology. Think about all the things, for those of you IT practitioners like me, um, all the things that you have to do to make it work. Search inside Amazon. Find the right thing. Recommendations end in. One-click ordering. Logistics and supply chain and warehousing. Returns. I mean, it is absolutely amazing what has been possible building on the internet platform and how that's enriched our lives as consumers. And I recall not that long ago that it wasn't this way. Okay. I remember waiting in line to get my punch cards processed on the mainframe in India when I was going to engineering school. Uh, when I went to RPI here in upstate New York, uh, Lisp was the hot language, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was. It was cool. It was a great language to programming. And, um, and there was no concept of a PC. They were just literally entering the stage. And here we are, virtually in any device, being able to connect. And let me tell you a, a quick story personally. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I grew up, my dad was in the Air Force, and uh, I grew up in different bases around India. I went to boarding school. And the way I used to communicate with my parents and loved ones was these little blue envelopes. And even when I, you know, you sort of came to the U.S., there was these envelopes called aerograms. Most of you aren't immigrants, so you don't won't connect. But these ten cents you used to just wait for that information, like that letter from your mom, or they used to, more importantly, wait for a letter from me. I, I used to do it every week, every week, once a week, just write them a letter, and. And now, as I moved here, uh, and I just recently moved from Boston to San Francisco to take on this role to head up Google Enterprise, you know, my son's experience was very different. You now, he was incredibly upset about moving. He's 14 years old. But he was able to stay connected with all his friends. They were really meaningfully connected on Facebook, through Gmail, through other means. And he really didn't have the dissonance and the disruption that I felt when I moved here with no technology, no connection, no collaboration. And to bring the story full circle, my mom, who's in her late 60s, just bought a Samsung Galaxy S3. Okay? This woman knows nothing about technology. She is like completely, she's afraid of a computer. The reason she bought it, she saw my dad was, he follows me on Google Plus circles. And I post pictures as soon as, like, on the weekend. I take, you know, pictures of games. And recently, this week was my son's graduation. Took pictures of that and posted it to my circle. And she was bummed that he used to, like, hog the PC. And, like, she's like, you know what? I don't want to deal with you anymore. I want my own phone. And I want to just follow and just get the app for Google Plus and get all the pictures. Amazing, magical experiences where people are connected with each other very fundamentally in ways that we just can't describe. And it really has enriched our lives. And this revolution of the consumer web and what's happened to our, our lives is really an opportunity for us in business, government, and education to really transform the way we work. Um, 
Now to the boring part. Um, let, me, let me tell you how we think about, um, how about, about cloud and, and some of these other trends at Google. Um, obviously, we were born in the cloud. We are a, a web native. Um, it's less about ubiquitous computing, because that's true. It is less about cost, because it is much cheaper to do it, because virtually unlimited computing power is available for you on the internet. Most of the web star startups that start today, they, they don't really buy hardware or servers or anything like that. They don't. They just spin up something on Amazon or on Google, and they start programming, and they see if they can scale their business very, very quickly. Um, it's, not, it's actually not about that. Cost is an important element, and I'm sure it can really help you in government, but it's actually about other things you could do. It enables certain business outcomes that just weren't possible. Um, I'll give you some commercial examples. If you think about, any of you use Netflix at home? Netflix users? Yeah, I love Netflix. Um, Netflix now has more video on demand users than Comcast does, okay, 24 million. And um, they really came out and over and started doing streaming and just on any device and fundamentally have transformed that industry. You know, obviously I gave you the example of retail. Literally people are doing, uh, have you heard the concept of showrooming? where consumers actually go to retailers, take their phones, um, look at the information in a retail store, and then price shop while they're in the store and order it. That's called showrooming. And literally, it's changing the way retailing is occurring, and they need to completely redefine packaging, skews, transparency. On the internet, somebody has said, you're naked. You need to completely transform how business is conducted. So the cloud, and, and these are examples of how people are using that to create new business models and to create better outcomes for their companies and organizations. Mobility is having fundamental uh, you know, impact to how we work. Uh, how many of you have more than one device? Say, fess up, all of you. Well, I think you're government, so you probably have to carry a Blackberry or something. Those days are coming to an end, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, I, I like them fine, it's just they didn't really stay up with innovation as they should have. Um, but I think fundamentally these devices, what they do is they transform how we consume information. It's a very personal device. It's always with you. You don't want to let go of it. It knows where you are. It's a very personal device compared to, you don't feel that way about a PC, do you? You don't. Mobile devices are very, very personal. And you can create amazing outcomes for yourselves, your citizens, if you really think about mobility in a very different way. We do at Google, we, we, our sort of policy around our products is mobile first. And we've con conducted a bunch of studies, the most recent one on our mobile blog, which you should take a time to take a look at, where it says, you know, it's an action-oriented device, mobility is. So when people conduct searches from their phone versus their desktop, they will take action 75% of the time. That is not the case on desktop. So you should do a search, you're traveling, you find something, you will either call a restaurant or make a purchase, et cetera. And it frees, the, what it ends up doing a mobile experience, because it needs to be simple, it connects with the technology in a more meaningful way. And I think it has deep implications for how you start to think about delivering outcomes and services to your employees or whoever your constituents are, um, and really rethink the architecture of IT. The third thing around social, um, my son wakes up and he doesn't check Gmail first, unfortunately. He, he checks Facebook first. That's where his buddies are, that's where his friends are, his colleagues, his cousins. Um, and I think there's a, a fairly uh, important shift that's occurring in enterprises where people are moving from having these asynchronous threads of, of, of discussions, really the old way of memos moved online, to a much more synchronous, real-time, collective experience that has very, you know, it has implications to organizations of all kinds. I can tell you from personal experience, um, we use Google+. Plus inside of Google, we have a version, advanced version that has enterprise controls and things that we haven't released to the public yet. And it, it's actually transformed how we work. We were very collaborative and open and innovative culture to begin with, 
but now you can follow people, see their thinking, s s look for help. It becomes a knowledge base. You can do hangouts where people just connect in real time. The, the, the time it takes from idea to uh, making that idea a reality has shrunk down dramatically. It really has had meaningful uh, change for us. Each of these individual areas, you know, mobile, social, cloud, are big tectonic shifts in the IT landscape, in the technology landscape. They clearly have helped us in our personal lives. Uh, but coming together as they have at the same time, I think they fundamentally have a way of, uh, in my opinion, transforming and how you deliver services to your constituents. Um, let, me, let me take some examples and, and talk to you about um, the last generation of IT architecture. Um, I, you know, I was part of that. I was a developer at Oracle for a long time. I designed some of the products that are still in the market. And what we designed for there was for individual user productivity. That was, that was when you were on a PC, you were working alone, and you were really designing for that experience and optimizing for great depth and specialization. It wasn't, you guys, most of you will remember, um, there used to be a program on the mainframe called an AP program or a GL program. I mean, they, they, we did a lot of great work of connecting all these things together, making them work in one fashion so people could be on the same page. But it was designed for process efficiency. If you think about what last generation architectures, ERP and CRM and even the desktop computing was designed for individual user process efficiency. Um, it really wasn't designed for the user. I mean, if you, and look at it, right? You take a screen, take an Oracle screen or an SAP screen in procurement. And I mean, it's just like, whoa, it's like crazy. How do you, how can people, how can the next generation of workers who come into the workspace make any sense of that? They are not going to read the manual. Do your kids read any manuals? No. Do you read any manuals anymore? No. You cannot design for that. You have to simplify, abstract every complexity, make it very, very easy. That's the problem with our last generation of technology. It really, you know, it was designed, and I've sort of thought about this deeply, it's like it was designed for the power user. It should have been designed for the average user. We should not worry about power users. They should be, we should do something very different for them. And um, second thing, it was designed to be built around offices, right? It's still built primarily around your enterprise, your organization, your, your government, and it's locked down, and you can't let people access it. IT just says no to everything. How many of you have heard that? No. <laughs> no, we can't do that. Can I? No, can't do that. We, then we created these alternate ways. We had VPN. I mean, it just became, it's just craziness. How, I mean, it really, technology is fun. It should, should be much easier than what it is. I was built really for a standard work day, and you know, we all know that's, that's just not how it is. And I, I feel like the way we think about technology and how we try to design our products, first of all, they need to be simple, okay? The idea of search, I mean, you can put a lot of things and filters and all that, is to keep it really simple. And the design aesthetic for our products is, is for that, you know, you know, simple use case. It should be built around teams, you know? It's the area of people collaborating together. This is the era where we, we are connected together through all these trends I talked about. And finding ways to kind of get great energy and innovation from teamwork is how we think about building. It should work on any device. Fundamentally, if you have to worry about the device and say, oh, can I get that information on this device, I think we've done something wrong as IT architects. It's, it, it, just, it should just work. And, um, and it should work any place, any time. I mean, some of these you know, geographical boundaries, et cetera, we should just get rid of it. And so when we think about building products, and you'll have a chance to interact with them and, and, and look at them, that's what we think about. Any device, any time, products should just work. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to make the web better. We're trying to make the web better and deliver amazing business products on the web for government. And the way, you know, I want to spend a few minutes on this, you know, it's a very different strategy than most other companies, okay? Google is proud of the heritage of building beautiful consumer products. And what we do is we take those products as the baseline because we have so much investment, so much IP, so much great stuff that happens that you use in your consumer lives. 
And then we add all the other capabilities on top of them that make them relevant for you in government, okay? So administrative controls, tools to migrate, tools to interoperate with your existing cloud systems, a service level agreement which is financially backed, 24 by seven support globally available so you can call us anytime. Specific infrastructure that we've built for the government called GovCloud, certifications of different kinds, you know, um, safe harbor for the folks who are outside of the US, FISMA, et cetera. So that's what we do. We add all of those great capabilities to our existing products and we bring them to you inside a government so that you can create amazing outcomes um, for the people who work, who work together. Um, so why don't we roll a video and I want to just have a customer actually tell you a little bit about what they've been able to do. Go ahead. Lake Havasu City is a city of approximately 52,000 people located on the Colorado River. It's also home to the world famous London Bridge. Our mission at the Lake Havasu City Police Department is very simple. It's to ensure a safe and secure community. As operations captain, I'm responsible for our uniformed uh, sworn positions. We're always looking to improve our internal communications. I remember working graveyard shifts and having the feeling that I never knew quite everything that was going on with the department. I came up with the idea of the water cooler so that we could provide all the employees an opportunity to give us feedback, to ask questions, and to hear from the command staff on what the goals and objectives of the department are. It gives the opportunity for our command and supervisory staff to directly give us information that we might otherwise hear word of mouth. We started the site with several topics to get the conversation rolling, but we found that officers have taken interest and they're participating and coming up with their own unique suggestions. We had an officer who was responding to a call in a gated community and had a little bit of difficulty obtaining the gate code. After the call, the officer had an idea on how we could more efficiently get those codes out to the field utilizing Google Apps. He got onto the water cooler site and made his suggestion, and we're going to be taking him up on it. Fortunately, it's real time, and it's not dependent on the officers being in the station. Officers can check either their mobile data computers in the cars or utilize their smartphones to get onto the water cooler no matter where they are or what time of the day it is. I'm a police officer. I don't have a background in IT but I found that getting onto Google Apps and creating a site was very easy. What a great story. Um, simple, transparent technology that goes in the, you know, goes, stays in the background. Uh, if you have to think about how to do something in a product, then it hasn't been designed well. It just should simply be available and people should just use it. And that's kind of how we think about products. And we've actually had amazing success with this. This is, an, this is the fastest growing business uh, inside of Google. Uh, we're just having huge success thanks to people like the folks in this room who want to transform government. And to help me talk a little bit about that, I want to introduce uh, M Michelle Westlander Quaid. Please come on the stage, Michelle. And let's tell you, if, you can clap for her, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, got, we got started in this business with, with actually people like you coming to Google and saying, look, how, I can find everything on the internet. You got these great algorithms that go search the web and I can just find it. But when I get inside my organization, I can find nothing. It's just so hard to find things and tell people. I mean, literally took the Google search algorithm and made it available. We, we did a lot of different tweaks that makes it um, uh, you know, relevant in, in institutions like governments and education and businesses. And we put it right on a search appliance which you can deploy inside uh, your organization. And uh, Michelle, tell us a little bit about Spaywar. So Sp Spaywar took our Google search appliance and implemented it in their enterprise bringing the intuitive Google search experience to their employees on their internet, helping them discover each other and share data information and expertise better than they had before. You know, it's, I found that, like, you know, there was uh, another example of Thomson Reuters, big media agency. They did A-B testing, if you know what that is. They do, they release a product two ways and sees how, see how people respond to it. In one, one of the, uh, they implemented the Google search appliance. One place they had just a box where you could search. 
Another place they had a box, like a universal box, just like you get on the internet, which says powered by Google. The second one had like 70% more traffic and people stopped using the first one after a while. And they were able to dramatically create like a different way of interaction with information than they could before. Um, you know, we're really proud of the work that we, we do with governments around the world, and you'll hear a little bit about this, around using a mapping technology to help people, for everything from first responders to firefighters, on how they can overlay their information on maps and earth to get, to get do really very amazing things. And um, I think uh, Michelle's gonna give us an example of the, is this the US Air Force? Uh, US on how they use mapping technology. The U.S. Air Force Weather Agency was looking for a better way to support flight crews in their mission planning. They took the beautiful Google Earth interface and overlaid their data, which includes weather information, airspace boundaries, and other mapping information, and provided that to the pilots, allowing them to reduce the time they required for mission planning in half. Furthermore, they can take that digital information with them on board the aircraft for use during flight, even without a network connection. Yeah. Yeah, the, the whole area of mapping, you, you probably saw that yesterday with Apple's announcement, is a really hard area. And the reason for it is it really brings your data to life. Seeing da you know, information in a spreadsheet or whatever versus seeing it displayed in a map uh, in, in, on an earth, it just can have, it, you can actually action those things. I'll give you an example. Ergon Energy is a uh, utility in um, Southeast Australia. They have to fly planes to uh, take images of the network. And they used to process all that imagery to make it convert it to digital and try and get it out. Um, cost them a, a lot of money. They've recently moved to Maps Engine, where they, they actually send their imagery to us. We put it in on Google Map Engine. It, is, it processes significantly faster because we have much more processing power than they can e ever afford. And now with Google Earth Portable, they can get it all to all the first responders. They all are seeing this private imagery on their mobile devices. And while doing that, they're saved about $35 million a year. So that's the kind of outcome the cloud and mobility enables. It's a better outcome at a lower cost. Um, third area that we've, we are really excited to introduce, how many of you use Chrome? Chrome. Thank you. Thank you for making it the number one browser in the world. We are very excited about that. We are really investing in Chrome to make the web better, to move the, move the web forward with design standards like HTML5 and all the investments that are going on there, because we feel there's a better way of building applications. We put um, the Chrome, um, we took Chrome and actually really made an, a new web operating system called Chrome OS. And we've put that right on hardware. These are the new devices. Samsung devices, yeah, it turns on in about four seconds. Uh, always on, has a 3G connection if you want it, or Wi-Fi. It also has a Chrome box where you can actually deploy it with existing peripherals for less than a dollar a day for total cost of ownership. So if you, those of you who you know, manage fleets of PCs, old PCs, I mean, there is, it is so expensive. It's a thankless job. Running email and managing PCs, nobody like thanks you, yeah? I mean, like, it, you only hear from people when things are not working. And we want to take all that drudgery all out of IT management. So we introduced these devices, Chrome devices, which can deliver any web or virtualized app at dramatic speed with the high, some of the highest level of security that you can imagine. And uh, let's hear about US Army from Michelle. So you must, US Army intelligence is piloting Chromebooks. And they've found that people can get up and running without any assistance. And another benefit of these books is that you can share them among team members. So they found in the end that the effort required to manage these devices is greatly reduced. And they're also saving time and money. Yeah. Those of you who have a parent like mine who don't know much about technology, give it to them. This is a foolproof device. Nothing can go wrong. It's a browser. They log in. It just works. And by the way, um, it has a sandbox environment for those of you who are more technically inclined. If somebody actually messes with the code, the device will not, will not start up. So it's, it's one of the most secure devices that has been built um, compared to many of the other PCs that people have running. And then um, you know, an area that I'm super excited about is we're staking Google's large computing infrastructure, our processing power, storage, 
et cetera, and bringing those capabilities to organizations. Um, recently, and this is, happens only at Google, I got a call from Buckingham Palace saying they want to talk to you. Right. What? You know, <laughs> they, there's a wedding, they need, they need to actually, they want to have the wedding be online available to everybody around the world. And they have to build a website and they expect 200 million visitors on the website. Okay, great. Um, we built it, took a few weeks. Um, they did get 200 to 220 million visitors on the site. Uh, and they wanted to build something that could scale very quickly. And Google App Engine is the product that we actually use internally uh, to do a lot of our own product building for our own internal use. And it scales you know, linearly. You can scale. You don't, you don't need to worry about how the application is built. And um, in that case, it scaled to 30,000 queries per second, right before the kiss is how many people who are online querying. <laughs> and that, you know, try to do that with your infrastructure. Actually, don't try to do that with your infrastructure. <laughs> it is not built for that performance. So as you're trying to think about the kinds of things you can do for citizens, think about, not just for your own internal people, but think about what you can, and this is just virtually free. You can start with a gig of storage and computing, and you can just start. There's nothing you need to do. You need to know Java programming and get a sandbox and get going. And that's the kind of things you can do. You take an idea and start implementing. And so let's hear about the Met Office and what they did. So Met Office is a national weather service for the United Kingdom. And they wanted to, to use App Engine in a similar way because they needed to build a website that could scale automatically on demand, especially in cases when there's severe weather, without any effort by the Met Office staff. So they used App Engine for that, and they also wanted to create a platform for amateur meteorologists around the globe to submit weather reports. And that platform would have to be able to scale automatically as well, depending on how much, many submissions they were giving, getting at any given time. In the first few months, they had over 25 million submissions and no hiccups. <laughs> wow, that's a great story. And last but not least, and you've heard a little bit about this, uh, we're investing in a broad set of team-oriented collaborative uh, products called Google Apps, and we have the government version, Google Apps for government. For everything from uh, email to calendar and messaging to productivity suite of pr products like Google Docs, most recently we announced Google Drive where you can really store any of your files and make them available on, on any device virtually with no, with no effort required on your part and collaborate on those legacy devices in EFA. And then we're excited about bringing in the future technologies like Hangouts and Google Plus to you so you can really connect and collaborate in real time. Um, best way to learn about them is just from the customers. It's because um, I feel like um, the last generation of technology that we've implemented really uh, was built for individuals, and this is built for teams. And we're seeing amazing outcomes. The example is Roche, um, is a, is a uh, healthcare organization in Switzerland. They bought Genentech in the US. They're, they're sort of consolidating everything on a Google Apps platform across 90,000 employees. Dr. Hippa was actually recently at Google a few weeks ago. And really, they want to focus on patient, edu patient care. They want us to run the IT, and they don't really want to be in the IT business per se. They want to focus on higher value tasks, you know, research, et cetera. Um, and maybe, um, Michelle, you could share, um, I know we'll hear later from NOAA and GSA, but a little bit about their stories. So Joe Klimovitz, who's the CIO at NOAA, if you were here last year, you recall his announcement on the decision to go to Google Apps. And he moved 25,000 employees to Google Apps in December. So this is allowing them, with this suite of capabilities, to transform their business processes and enhance collaboration. Furthermore, they have a globally distributed workforce. So they're empowering them with better mobile capabilities and collaboration tools so they can do their important mission, whether at land or at sea, globally. And then Casey Coleman, the CIO of GSA, she'll be with us later today as well. And she really led the way for the federal government in making GSA the first federal agency to move to cloud-based email. And they're saving $5.2 million over five years and taking advantage of the full suite of capabilities in Google Apps to transform their business 
enhance collaboration among their employees so they can truly live the mantra of any team, any time, any place, any device. Michelle, is, it says 15, is that five? 15.2 million. Okay, good, that's good. We found an extra 10 million that you could use elsewhere. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Um, you know, this is really more, uh, this is a movement. Um, you know, I'll just give you a sense, every day, um, Five, this is the public metric, 5,000 businesses are moving from legacy systems to Google Apps every day. We have, this is a lot of online signups and, and you know, 5,000 people, 5,000 businesses on a daily basis. And really, it's, it's really transforming how those organizations are working together and working with others. And some of the largest companies in the world, most recently we announced BBVA, which is a large global bank in Spain, Costco, fairly large retailer. Uh, we announced Meet Invest Vehicle, Sealed Air. These are all Fortune 500 companies. So this is the, the products are ready. But mo what we get more excited, these, this is all great, uh, is, is about um, you know, what's happening in government. I think government has an opportunity to transform and um, really change and bring, and I love the, the name here, innovation for the nation, is like, you know, how can we really use technology to deliver amazing new outcomes? Because in the end, it's really about the users and creating magical experience that we, like I remember when I wrote my first bubble sort, like what I, oh my God, this is great. You get this great rush of technology and you know, I think in, in the last generation, we've sort of lost it a little bit. And I think here's an opportunity to really change that, really change that and deliver. And these are real users. They're real users, happy users. Uh, Christine Atkins, a good friend of mine, she's CIO of Ahold, global retailer. They have a Stop and Shop and Peapod in the US. She's like, you know what, this is the easiest thing I did. And users thanked me. They thanked me. And, you know, uh, I remember recently, you know, th that kind of magical experience. I had that, you know, my, it was my dad's birthday a few weeks ago. I was in Brazil and I forgot. And, you know, he's nice enough. He pinged me. He said, hi, how you doing? I'm like, oh, yay, dad, happy birthday. I was just going to call you. <laughs> and amazingly enough, I had enough of a connection. It was my, my mobile device. Uh, I said, you, 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 you free to do a hangout? We click the button, here is my dad. He's available on video, we we're video chatting on my phone. Um, and he was like, oh, the venue looks really great. I'm like, what is he talking about? And then I realized he follows me on Plus and I post pictures of each of the venues and he's really engaged in my life. You know, he knows what I'm doing, where I am, how things are going, completely connected with the kinds of things we do in our personal lives. And what, uh, what we're really excited about at Google Enterprise is how we can bring that kind of magic to you and government. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>